Hello everyone. Back today to talk about the second topic in our essential series. My name is Joe Kane and I'm a member of the Rollomatic team in North America. Most of the time I'm based in our office in the Chicago area, but today I'm at our headquarters in Leylander on Switzerland, the birthplace of Rollomatic and our machines. It is my pleasure to present this episode of the essentials tool materials. See the different colors of tools here. That's simply because they've been ground from different materials. Each of the materials we'll talk about today has different characteristics. These characteristics allow, among other things, optimum efficiency in material removal during the machining process. Obviously, it's also crucial to choose the right machine for the type of material you're going to grind. So let's discover the materials now. Remember the last episode? Most of the tools produced by Rollomatic machines are made of tungsten carbide. Tungsten carbide is the combination of two materials, tungsten and cobalt, the two cubes on the table right here. But before we find it in a solid form, like the blank I'm holding, we find it in powder form. To transform this powder into a solid blank, we use a process called sintering. Basically, we take the powder, compress it, and heat it to over 1,600 degrees Celsius until one of the materials melts. Under the effect of pressure and heat, the cobalt, which is only about 8% of the mixture, will melt, liquefy, and mix with the tiny tungsten carbide nanoparticles. Then we let it cool down, and there you go. We've got our solid blank. So why use carbide tools? The answer is simple, hardness. Generally speaking, the harder the tool, the more likely it is to resist wear over time. Also, the harder the tool, the easier it is to remove material. In practice, though, it's not that simple. Tool geometries, the type of application, and many other factors need to be considered. To help you compare the hardness of different materials, we've decided to present the Knoop scale. In 1939, an American researcher by the name of Frederick Knoop developed a system for measuring hardness. Hardness tests whether Knoop, Vickers, or Rockwell are performed using very hard penetrators of a defined shape and size and pressing them into the material under a defined force. Based on how the material deforms, such as depth and dimensions, we can determine the level of hardness. Today we'll be using the Knoop scale to compare the different materials in our episode because it's the better alternative for comparing hard materials. So, let's place our tungsten carbide on the Knoop scale. It would fall around 1,500 HK. Carbide is most commonly used for a whole range of standard cutting tools, from drills to end mills, for machining steel parts, for example. Another advantage of carbide is its high heat resistance, enabling high-speed machining, removing material faster. The second material we'll talk about is high-speed steel, or HSS. In the 1900s, Frederick Taylor, the father of Taylorism, conducted a series of experiments to increase the hardness of steel. He was working as an engineer in a steel manufacturing company, and with a colleague, they observed that certain steels, when heated, almost to the point of melting, produced a very hard metal. HSS was born. HSS is tungsten carbide's little brother in a way. It's not as resistant in terms of hardness and temperature, but it's much cheaper. For example, if you want to machine parts at a slower speed, HSS is for you. The material is also used in many consumer tools, like the drills you would find at your local hardware store. If we place untreated HSS in our hardness graph, we'll find it just below our tungsten carbide at around 850 HK. To make HSS harder and more resistant over time, you have two options. Option one, raise a carbide tip to the front of your tool. And option two, and the same applies to tungsten carbide, you can coat it with a tiny protective layer. This process is known as PVD, or physical vapor deposition. The layer added to the tool can measure between one and 10 microns. For reference, the diameter of a human hair is about 75 microns. Let's compare now our two first materials with one of the hardest alloys known, polycrystalline diamond, known as PCD, the disc you see in my hand. PCD is composed of randomly distributed diamond and cobalt to get to this condition, we have to go through the same sintering process as for tungsten carbide. At a high temperature, the cobalt changes from a solid to a liquid and mixes with the diamond. In most PCD cutting tools, 
The PCD, usually half a millimeter thick, provides the cutting edge, while the less expensive hard metal gives the tool the necessary strength and toughness. Here's an example. PCD's superior characteristics, notably in terms of hardness, wear resistance, coefficient of friction, quality, efficiency, and durability, about 10 to 20 times longer cutting than hard metal, make it a worthy competitor to carbide and cutting ceramics. If we place PCD on our Knoop scale, it would be in the 6,500 HK range. Knowing that, and depending on the quality, Pure Diamond ranges from 7 to 8,000 HK. The main disadvantage for diamond tools is the price, but also the fact that it cannot machine ferrous materials, like iron. The presence of iron in machine parts leads to a chemical reaction that causes ultra-rapid wear. Therefore, these tools are used to machine non-ferrous materials, such as aluminum, copper, and gold. We still have two materials to add to our chart. First, let's talk about ceramic. Whether in white, black, or other exotic colors, ceramic has several advantages. Long tool life, minimal wear and tear, and high temperature resistance, making it a strong competitor to other tooling materials. However, beware of vibration. It's a breakable material. If you're going to use ceramic tools, you need to make sure your machining center is rigid. Otherwise, the ceramic tool will likely break. In terms of hardness, ceramic is slightly harder than tungsten carbide at around 2000 HK. Finally, stainless steel. The great advantage of these various stainless steel tools is that they are not susceptible to corrosion. They don't rust. Let's take 316L as an example. The L symbol designates low carbon composition, further increasing its resistance to humidity making it the most common metallic biomaterial used for human implants. This biocompatibility means it can be used on the human body with instruments like scissors, scalpels, tweezers, and other medical devices, like bone screws. Other materials can be compatible with the human body, including titanium and gold. The disadvantage of stainless steel is its hardness. In fact, it's the softest material on our scale around 150 HK. In our case, the softer the material, the more difficult it will be to achieve a quality surface finish in a single pass when grinding the tool. Of course, making tools from this type of material requires knowledge and a well-defined process for grinding wheels and speeds. Another contribution of Frederick Taylor. This is the art of developing the grinding process and the selection of the wheels we use to grind our tools. And that brings us to the topic for our next episode of The Essentials, grinding wheels. We'll look at the different sizes, forms, grits, and bonds that make up abrasive grinding wheels and how they play an integral part in the grinding process. Thanks for joining us.